this is development in a box. So if you were thinking about something other than how to do fundraising relationships, you're in the wrong room. <laughs> and I am Beverly Ferry, and I am with, oh, I'm the person with the thing. Living well in Wabash County. And it is a, it's here in Indiana, northern Indiana. We're rural, we're very rural, but we're in a town where nobody thinks we're rural. We think we're a city. We're rural. But my community um, truly believes that if it's the best, they can have it. Now, we haven't quite sold them on everything with about senior centers and haven't quite done an education process, but so I live in a very unique community. And we are a council on aging, which in Indiana is kind of, some councils on aging are active. They were started back in the 1970s so that they can bring in then their, the um, uh, AAAs. Uh, and it just varies depending on where you are in the state on how active the Council on Aging is versus, say, just a senior center or the AAA. And now my lovely participant, lovely, lovely partner here. You'll see the contrast between the two of us very <laughs> shortly because I'm just going to crawl up here like, you made me do this. Um, did you want me to give your... Well, we probably have... I just uh, wanted to give you a few housekeeping things. I okay. Mean, I didn't think we were quite uh, ready yet. So oh, I'm, we just don't Hello. Ready. Come Hello. in. Thank you. We're off and running. Don't dock me on that. I'm a fan. She started so early. I started right on the button. Well, you were Sorry. Hello, welcome everybody. Glad you're here. I'm Lynn Hyatt, and I am uh, with Millray Center here in Columbus. Uh, and I just uh, supposed to kind of do house cleaning, housekeeping things with you, and let you know the restrooms are right outside the door, which you may have already uh, figured out. Um, we've been handing out surveys, and at the end, I'd like to collect those from you. You can leave them on the chair, or I'll pick them up from you uh, from the door if you go, so we can have continued improvement in, in the whole process of, and presentation. One thing I, I'm not sure that has been mentioned, if you wish to access the material shared in today's presentation, you're probably hearing this in all the uh, sessions that you're going to. Uh, you, but for this one, you'll visit uh, Ms. Ferry's session description at pitmaninstitute.org. I think they're all listed there. Is that right, Paula? So, so uh, that's good. And then, you've already kind of introduced yourself. Uh, Just couldn't wait. <laughs> <laughs> you know, of living well in Wabash County. Mm -hmm. uh, a key part of Beverly's work since 03 has been diversifying funding sources, uh, resource development, and community collaborations, which I know for us is important. She's passed Indiana Delegate to NCOA's List Delegate, Delegate Council and their Public Policy Committee Chair. Mm -hmm. So you really know what you're doing. She is past president of the Indiana <laughs> Association of Senior Citizens as well. So thank you for being with us. That's wonderful. Amy Rose is a 10-year fundraising veteran, uh, working for various types of nonprofits, including religious, arts, social services, and health care. Wide variety. She has a personal lifetime fundraising tally of over $500 million. Working in over 38 states across the United States. Amy and Beverly have successfully worked together on living well in Wabash County, COAs, is that how you? COA. COAs, okay, sorry. Strategic development plans, feasibility study, and annual fund campaign since 2012 raising more than 500000 over three years for Senior Center's operating budget, in addition to anonymous gift of 200000 to the permanent endowment in 2013. Welcome. Join me in welcoming Amy to the You can just join the show. Well, <laughs> well you know, why don't you come over here that we want to be tag team? You officially have the clicker. I do have a clicker, I'm so I'm saying. But you have to keep reminding me that I have a clicker. Oh, the other way. So, um, one thing that we hadn't added, because it's on a local level, it's real private, but we've also had an anonymous uh, prom, a gift of um, even larger than our endowment, um, which is to go for capital projects as a result of the work that we're doing. So. It's just kind of one of those slow, you just kind of keep going, you keep getting it 
in, in front of people and talking to them. And, and because we're doing good work, people will listen to that. So the workshop objectives, learn the importance of development as opposed to event fundraising, and leave with a clear set of tasks and techniques to create an annual fund campaign. So if you, part of that is going to be, if anybody, if you haven't gotten any of the post-its or the little notes, the little thumbs up, you want to go ahead, go ahead and grab them. Um, go ahead, if you haven't gotten any, go grab one because you're going to need them. What we want you to do is we want to encourage you to put tags on things that you either want to come back to, something you think, oh, that Joe Schmo is going to be really good at that. And I know I'm supposed to stand right here for the camera. I'm sorry. You're fine. You're good. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? So it's really easy when you go to a conference. You're going to block out this not, part, right? you know, You're listening and you're thinking, oh, I'm going to do that. But you just really forget when you get home because you get busy. So the, um, this was the best $1.12 I spent for Walmart on each of those packs. <laughs> so we also want you to gain an understanding of best practices of fundraising. The absolute worst thing you can do is to hurt yourself by doing something that's unethical. And sometimes you just need to know where the boundaries are to make sure that you're on the right track. So what is development? It is not slick talk or smoke and mirrors. I think sometimes development has maybe the same uh, bad rap that perhaps advocacy does. And really, they're both um, necessary. And development is building relationships, listening to the donor's concerns and interests. It's mission-based, it's long-term, and it's building trust. Now, events are great if you are not only raising some money, but also raising awareness, and then having them be a, a gateway to a developing relationships. And I'm going to guess, how many people in here have uh, events that are fundraisers? Okay. How many in here think that their events that are fundraisers also are, really, they build relationships beyond from participating? Okay, good. So you guys, you guys have that idea. And if you are not doing that, there are some really simple ways you can, you can do it with like registrations, you can you know, follow up, send a thank you for coming. Uh, we've done something as simple as taking, this is again, Walmart, but I think maybe other discount stores have them, just uh, plain little note cards. We ran it through on my printer with our logo and just sent a thank you note, thank you for coming. And you can even have these written ahead of time and get those in the mail the next day. And they'll think, wow, they really noticed that I came. Because a lot of times when you go to something, you think, ah, it doesn't matter. But next time, they're going to know you noticed. So they're going to want to come. Oh, <laughs> upside down. All right, so this is. Amy's uh, do some Amy, Yeah, Amy's do some jokes. <laughs> She's forcing me to talk in front of you all. I'm one of those doers. I'm not really like those who don't do teach, those who don't teach do. I'm that person. Those who don't teach do. So I'll try to talk really slow. and. Like, so you understand me. Um, but when we were talking about this, the Amy's do's and don'ts, when, um, you know, the, the thermometer that United Way typically uses and that, well, when you go to the AFP conferences, Association of Fundraising Professional Conferences, and different fundraising conferences, you know, they, they mixed those about, you know, 10 years ago. They're like, no, you can't ever win with the thermometer because if you're halfway there, then people think, well, you're halfway there, you don't really need my money. And then if you're 90% there, kind of the same thing. But if that little ball at the bottom is filled in, and there's a whole stick to go, people will look at that like, oh yeah, yeah, you're never going to meet that goal. I don't know. <laughs> you know. So it's really, the, 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 the theory behind it is, is not terribly positive. So this, there's statistical data alongside that too. But I got to tell you, I was in Memphis last year. And the, the, the Catholic Diocese of Memphis, I ran a campaign there for the bishop. He's retiring. And um, they send, they do an annual fund every year for, for the Catholic Church, and they send posters with the thermometer out to every parish, and they love filling in <laughs> where they're at. They have a patient mark, though, as well as the, the financial mark. So if you're going to use a thermometer, just make sure, you know, their participation rate's in there. Because then you can, you know, maybe you are only at 50% of your goal, but you have... Maybe this would be a bad scenario. Maybe eighty percent participation. So people are really behind it, you know, just lacking a little bit in the gifts. Um, and then we also we're going to talk later a little bit about um, the this is uh, donor bill of rights. Uh, you can, we we put it in the back of your little packet. But sometimes if you're ever like thinking, "Ooh, is that questionable?" or 
you know, people are kind of gossiping at the, at the office a little bit about, you know, this gift that's going to come in or whatever. And you just, you just kind of want to read over that donor bill of rights just to kind of make sure you're falling, you're falling in line. Um, and then also, we'll talk a little bit about campaign momentum, but a little bit later. Okay. <laughs> okay, so full disclosure. Uh, my, I had an employer uh, that I had left and got just before I came to the senior center, and he called me one day and he said, I have found your civil sister. I said, what? He said, I have found a duplicate of you. And I said, what? He said, yeah, she came in and interviewed. Her name's Amy. You need to meet her. I said, are you going to hire her? He said, no, I've already been down that road. I will only go down the bed <laughs> road once. <laughs> and so we, got, we connected, and then it took eight years before she was not on the road, before I could get her to connect with us at the senior center. But I kept on that whole time. So, my, so it's perseverance. So this the donor bill of white rights, we're close, you can also find it on, there's two webs. If you Google it, you'll find it, but it's AFP, and then the other one is FCNet.org, or Chronicle of Philanthropy. I don't, and uh, wait for a second, we need to give them a disclaimer. How many of you are seasoned fundraising professionals in here? That, okay, so we have, we have a couple that, you know, you're raising money on a typical, okay, we had no budget, no staff, and, no plan when we started. I'm sorry, we did. We should have probably prefaced this. So when we're coming off like, hey, this we've been doing this for years, we had nothing. We had a deficit in our budget. That's what we had. So that that's what led led to this. So I didn't want you to think that, you know, we live in the middle of nowhere in Cornfield, and um, you know, philanthropy is not something that rolls off the tongue out there. And so, but it is well practiced. It is well it's practiced just under the surface. But you know, so we started with nothing. So I just want you guys to know that in a little way. So I thought when Amy came on board with me to help as, um, as you know, as my recruited volunteer friend, that we we're going to head right into sending out letters or getting money. And she said, nope, we're going to stop and we're going to listen. And it became the most important part of what we did. And this is going to lead into what we recommend, which is doing a discovery phase. Now, how many of you have to raise a certain amount of money by the end of December. Okay. How many of you already do annual fund campaigns? Okay. So of those people who just raised their hand, that go, how many of you still have to raise? Is there anybody who has to raise a certain amount who's never run any kind of a campaign? Okay, we're good. So how many of you have done the discovery phase? All right, good. We're going to talk about this. This is what we suggest that you offer, that you, you make as part of your practice so that you can really know, get to know your donors. And you think you know them, but this, this will help you get to better. And we believe that planning makes perfect, but it's hard to know where to begin. And just like you don't get a job, that perfect job overnight, it doesn't happen accidentally. There's a whole lot that went into that job. It's the same thing with um, a good campaign and fundraising. So develop, developing your donor list is one really important part. And I will tell you that my prediction is that most of you find this to be maybe the most difficult thing, to develop a, a donor list and also keep it current. Um, how many of you have dead people on your list? <laughs> Seriously. You know, you get that back, you no know, longer this address. And, yeah. I mean, that is one of those things that it, you need to remain current. And you also have to remain current in that if someone has asked you to take you, them off the list, you need to make sure you do that and you don't make a mistake, you get that taken care of, and you do that before you do anything else that day. So the donor list is going to fuel your success. And we consider the discovery study to be the homework. Now, I was not a fan of this when we started because it, it just, I'm like, okay, all right, she kept saying it's, it's going to be good. So, and we thought there are senior centers that could benefit from just understanding this process. So it's a hybrid of, if you've ever heard people talk about uh, feasibility studies, it's usually tied to capital campaigns, and basically, you know, it's looking at to see kind of how much money you're going to be able to raise, and, and then a prospect discovery study. Prospects meaning potential donors. I was really thinking about putting like a little gold miner on there. Okay, so the study, the process, allows you to conduct it internally to reduce costs, and this is what we're going to talk about. So preferably not done by the executive director or the CEO, it could be a board member, or it could be a volunteer, but I would uh, put a caveat there that, uh, and a caution, 
so there needs to be some training of the person, and we'll talk about it a little more. Whoever you have do it, you've got to make sure that you've, they're not going to slant the questions. You've got to make sure that they don't have an axe to grind. You've got to make sure that they're not necessarily going to push their opinion, good or bad, it doesn't matter. But you don't want their opinion. You want the person that you're talking to. So it's going to help you base your case statements, for, and it will also help you set your annual fund goals. So it is about getting ready to learn. Create, and these are the steps, and as she mentioned earlier, we, this is online if you want it, uh, but the steps, you know, you've got to create your study calendar. So in other words, you got to plan it out, you know, your good old fashioned outline, and all the different elements that go into it. One-on-one -on -one interviews, so there's different phases of what you do. So the one-on-one -on -one interview is a result of a letter and a phone call, and you want to make sure that you, you, know, you don't say, I want you here at 1 o'clock on Tuesday. Say, when would it be convenient, right? And this shouldn't last more than an hour. And you have it someplace in your facility. And for some of the people that you're inviting in, while they may have already given you a donation in the past, they might not have ever been at, the, at your center. So I'm going to go back just a second. Um, so in this process and in your papers, does everybody have them? So, We've included some things such as the questionnaire, the questionnaire that we used. We've included um, some other pieces to this. And also we have a, a sample a study calendar. So we have some of those things in, there's two packets, we have some of the things in that second packet. So everybody that you potentially might want to interest, interview has received a letter saying, we'd like your opinion. And we don't tell them exactly how we're going to do it, whether they're going to be interviewed one-on-one. -on -one. Oops, wrong direction. Another way, you, know, you might have the one-on-one. -on -one. Some people might be more comfortable in a group. So you can have a focus group. The focus group's an easy, ready-made focus group would be participants. Um, but you're not talking about um, how much can you give me as much as you're getting their impressions, you're getting feedback. So if you see that in, your, in the one that has the, the, in the packet, again, you're listening. So it's not where you're going to lecture them or give a talk about the senior center, you're really listening and you're asking questions that will elicit responses. Then you can go big, you can go online. We did it on SurveyMonkey and we promoted the survey in our newsletter, we promoted it with a news release, we had it on the radio, uh, and we drove it with also uh, in social media. So, so what kind of questions are you asking? There's actually it's That's contained. A great question. Is there, Go ahead. Do you have a slide up there with it in here? We have it in our packet. We have it in here. If you didn't grab this packet, that's fine. We have, we'll have it online. But the actual question. Are we have Actually, do you want to? Yeah, sure. Okay, so what we did I was, think. oh my god, I'm getting a little bit more comfortable now. I really don't like speaking from the vodka. Okay, um, <laughs> we, what we did was because we knew what, how much money we could raise looking back the last five years. And when I looked at that money, I was like, I think maybe we could grow that. I think that there is more, there are more gifts out there than what we're capturing. You know, because I'm looking at other nonprofits in the area, I'm thinking, you know, there's a lot of season. Uh, development people that are working at universities and have sort of cultivated, you know, donors and that type of thing. See, now I'm using language. But. So, so what, what we needed to do was some kind of study. We needed to find out what people were interested in, what that is offering. Are they interested in transportation? Are they interested mostly in the senior center? Are they interested mostly in the food pantry? In terms of not participation, but in terms of supporting. What would they donate to? Exactly. So what I thought going into this was, well, of course it's going to be food. Food's going to be first, you know, duh. Because if you, if you can't eat, well, how are you going to get on a bus and go to the senior center? So that's what I was thinking. When we did the study, and she did fight me on this. That's the first time in public she's ever admitted she didn't want to do the study, by the way. But, um, <laughs> but she, didn't, she just wanted to get to raising the money, you know. But um, so when we did the study, you know, it wasn't, you know, Gallup probably would not be proud. You know, we, we you know, we, we were, you know, made all kinds of mistakes and stuff. But we, meanwhile, we, you know, this is, these are not seasoned professionals. These are staff people.
that agree basically to go and sit down with people and go over these questions. Some of the questions here, yeah, like the first one is, do you consider yourself an active supporter? Yes, no, someone. And I might say, that doesn't necessarily mean in their, in their mind that it's money, right? right? And, right, exactly, so that's where we're leading. Then number two, how long have you been a supporter? You know, um, uh, and then, you know, basically it's blank years. So how long have you known anything about the center? Blank years. Then um, you go through what we have, and, and this is also involved in some things online over here, but what we call it the challenge statement. So you basically, before you do the study, you, you write up a little, like maybe four things that make you guys great. Four things that you're challenged with you need to raise money for. So, you know, whether it's meals, transportation, the senior center, if you have a capital project, anything at all, you put it on this little challenge statement because you want to tell people this is where we want to go. So, it's a challenge statement. They look at the challenge statement and you say, these are the four things we're working on, put them in order, one to four, in importance to you. So they did that. Then we went um, on uh, further, are there things that should be on this list that aren't? So are there things that, you know, here's what we feel like we need to raise money for, are there other things that, that aren't on this list? And boy, that, was that an open-ended question. And you can't argue with them. No. Nope. You're just eliciting a response. You're just writing it's not a discussion for you. To, whoever doing this interview just writes it down. Um, and that's when she said you need to be trained a little bit so that you don't need them because you don't want to do the eye roll. You know, somebody says, well, I'd like to have, you know, I don't even know what. You don't want to do that. I mean, that's not good. That's sort of leading. <laughs> so then um, another question we did was, um, you know, we're thinking about doing an annual fund, you know, a concerted effort. You know, how do you feel about that? You know, and it was all about the economy. You know, the economy's stupid, and boy, we heard it. It was like, this is a rural town. There's 11,000 people in this town. We have to support the Y. We have to support the, the you know. The fine arts center. The fine arts center. The hospital. Um, the hospital. You know, all the, the children's these, home. The, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, just always, right? I mean, because people are always have money. That came up a lot. Um, and then the seventh question is, um, with regard to your own involvement, would you, one, give to an annual fund? Yes, no, maybe. Two, give to a, a permanent endowment. Yes, no, maybe. Some of these things have never been talked about, okay, at the senior center. They, permanent endowment, endowment. They didn't even know we had one, you know. So it's really education. And then, um, you know, three was give to special projects. Yes, no, maybe. Kind of an open-ended question, reasonably so. Then we asked, uh, you know, how does living well in Wabash County COA rate as a charitable priority of yours? Because we expect church is going to be first. And then maybe alma mater, because they're getting stuff every other day from their alma mater, from their university, or whatever. And we, we'd like to come in third. You know, we'd like to be third. But you don't really want to talk about that at this point. Um, and so, you know, you just range. You can rate kind of where we're at with the particular, uh, you know, potential donor. And then we said, you know, would you consider living well in Wabash County in your estate planning, your plan giving? And then it was uh, 10 significant gifts will be needed to uh, sustain these programs that we listed, programs and services actually, that we listed on that challenge statement. Um, if you were considering making a gift to an annual fund, you know, we give them a little chart, you know, zero through $500. It's in there. Is it? Okay, yeah. cool. The chart, right, guys. It's the last page. Here's the charts on the back here. Are you in column A, B, or C? Still trying to find out where they're at. Financial. But you call it A, B, or C so that you're not a little more private, even though they're saying it to you. Right, mm -hmm. right, exactly, exactly. Then we asked, um, uh, basically, uh, and I love this statement. This is probably the most important thing on the whole survey. Please complete the following statement. If there was one thing I wish Living Well in Wabash County COA would do, I wish it would. And then that is really where people get to vent. You know, they can talk about something that didn't work out. They can say, oh my gosh, I went to that event, Tin Caps Game in Fort Wayne, it's the best night of my life. We really need to do more of these things. You know, and then you just get all these ideas and all of their feedback. Or you really helped our neighbor. Oh, yeah. Um, they, you know, they wouldn't have made it without transportation. Yeah, exactly. Um, exactly. And then, um, then to complete the flying statement, the best thing living well in Wabash County does is, so you always want to end on a happy note. Because usually that last question, you know, there can be some venting, right? I mean, you know, something that didn't work out so well. That can happen. So then the last question is always positive. 
So what we've done is you've all heard of, or maybe not, a feasibility study that goes along with the capital campaign. Well, we're not doing a capital campaign, but we still need to find out how people feel. So we don't call this a feasibility study, we call this a discovery study, because that's basically what it is. And so part of that is we talked about that it was a hybrid of a donor prospect, a prospect study, and a feasibility. So it's just kind of what we kind of created, yeah, just kind of came about. Can I ask a quick question? Yes. Are the questions that you just went over for the interviews, are they the same ones that you used on the online survey? Yes. 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 Everything was, yeah. okay. we were consistent. We were consistent, yes. Okay. So this is what we, we've already mentioned, that it's, it's not the time to try to persuade, but there are subtle things that you do, like by bringing them into the center. You know, people are influenced by that, and hopefully in a very positive way. Um, by being gracious when they come in and showing them how you really do things. Um, if they have a bad experience when they come in for the discovery study, they're not going to become one of your donors. So then you get all this information, and you've we've, we go from one-on-one -on -one discussions to focus groups, to, I think we even did some of the interviews over the phone, um, although we always tried to get them into the center. And then we went to analyzing the discovery study results. And the picture kind of says it, that it really does shed light on the prospects. And not only that, but it really, one of the key things is that it really gives you an insight into how people really see the agency. And I use agency, you don't know, use the term senior center hybrid. But here's the thing. If you've got issues, if you've got something that's kind of going to drag you down, you want to know it before you start the campaign. You want to identify it. You want to be able to address it. And I'm not talking about making excuses, but you really need to have to look at that. Because that, be, that can be your make or break it. You don't want to have something to surface that surprises you. You want to uncover all of this now. I'm not talking about anything, you know, like, you know, horrible, but maybe there, there's misperceptions. And so you, if you find it out here, then you can possibly address it in whatever materials you put out. Um, you know, so this is, you know, you sort by gift levels where they said they were on the gift chart. You just told us a guide when you're setting your annual fund. Although, what we discovered is, it seems to hold true, you can come in and talk to your board of directors or whatever group you know is your um, that you're doing this with, like your friends of the center, whoever you know is your that group that arm. Sometimes they're just going to do whatever they they're going to decide to raise whatever amount they want to raise. Whether you've said, I think we can raise two hundred thousand, and they say we're going to raise two hundred fifty. That happens, <laughs> and so you really also need to take into consideration like what have people responded to in the past. So here's my brain teaser. This is the development term. What is it? Okay. Oh, exactly. What's this? What do you put on the outside of your case? Case. Case study. Case studies. No. Uh, case what is it? Statement. Statement. Case statement. statement. Yes. Because I. Oh. Should I want you. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. 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 <laughs> so your case statement is why you're raising money. You share the need, what the money will do, and share the impact. It's not that we need it. we need so much money. It's this is needed. Joe Schmo, you know this. With this, we will serve. You know, telling your stories. So then you get your information, you've got you've done your discovery study. Now it's time to put things together so that you can actually approach the public in terms of your campaign. So you're gonna recruit people to help you make plans. You're going to review the discovery study. You don't do all that work and then not pay attention to what people decide. You're going to approve your donor list. Don't let somebody else put it together and you're not looking at it. Have more than one set of eyes on it. A great place to get lists if you haven't already done this. Um, you go to a, a ballet and they have benefactors listed. <coughs> you go to whatever event, local theater, Go to whatever, you know, anything that publishes their names, you steal them. There's nothing wrong with that, everybody does it. But that's also why you're not going to publish your names when you get a list. <laughs> so, it's true. I learned that from my friend Amy. 
Um, so you draft your brochure and all your campaign materials, and so one of the first things you need to do is find somebody who's a good proofreader. A friend, somebody at the office, a board member, your mother, whoever it is, find somebody who can proofread, because everything that goes out, including the letter about the, the, camp, the study, needs to be proofread. You do not want to have a mistake that just, I mean, you, you want it to be perfect, you really do. So you also need to talk about memorial opportunities. You know, do you want to have, um, you know, do you want to be able to give an honor or in memory of someone? Um, at the end of this, we, we have some samples and I've, I've got even more in my box. But one of the things we did was we put together, we, we had done cards and envelopes. This is the one I like the best. And it just has the envelopes with the different levels and with memorial oppor opportunities. You can take that as a sample. And then you set your campaign calendar. Now, we all know the importance of having, putting euchre or bingo on the schedule, right? When you're senior center or whatever is really important. Because people need to know what time to come to that. Because it's really important to them to come. If you change the time and don't tell them, they're not happy, right? Okay, so you have to approach it like that. You have to force yourself to stick to a schedule. If you've not done it or if you have done it and you're inconsistent or whatever, you've done it a couple years, maybe you didn't do it a third year, you need to make sure that you set a schedule for yourself, everybody in the office knows when they're going to be doing things, and then you stick to it. Because we know this stuff happens. In a senior center, you know, you just can't, you can't come into it and know exactly how your day's going to go. Because it's never, it's never the same. May I say something? That may, that may be public enemy number one for about 36 months at our center. <laughs> I unfortunately was the one that was keeping it on task. <laughs> that was not possible. But we remained friends for all. <laughs> so, really, the path to success, a good appeal letter for your first mailing, and we have some letters in there, but we also are going to put out um, just a, if you want to have it online, you know, an electronic form, you can, our information's on those packet on the, on the handout. If you email me, we will send you an electronic thing of, of the collection of all the letters, and you can use them, um, you know, just use them as a guide. So then campaign pieces and brochures allow more time than what you think you'll need, because it always takes more, there are always more revisions, and again, you want to make sure everybody has um, looked at it. Same thing with the donation envelope. You need to have somebody look at it who has nothing to do with your center and say, does this make sense? So then, oh, we did it. Okay, so then your campaign, and it really is under construction, it definitely is a hard hat zone. Um, it really helps to take every, bring everybody together who's gonna be a part of it and say, okay, make it a little tight, make it a little, we don't want, don't want to have tempers to flare. We're all in this together. And if somebody drops the ball, we're going to just pull back together and we're going to get it done. And you make your, so when you go through this process, don't do a dear, try not to do a dear friends. It is much better to like do, make it personal, use mail merge. If you don't know how to do mail merge, I guarantee you, you know somebody, whether it's at your church or in the community or somebody knows how to do mail merge and they can help you. Volunteer time to assemble mailings. The average cost that you budget as a fundraiser is like five, bucks. five bucks per person on your list. As a senior center, I think we drive that down to more like a couple of bucks. Yeah. You know, because you you can maybe even get an in-kind contribution from the graphic artist, or you print it in-house, you have volunteers, they're a folding and assembling. You know how we do it. And then the nonprofit mail rate. How many of you have your own nonprofit number? Okay, how many of you go through another organization for years? Now that's what we do. And then we actually have, when we do the printing of our envelopes, we have the indicia, the, the stamp, we have that just printed right on. And sometimes time really is money. And what I say is to outsource or not to outsource, that is the question. And I go through that with a lot of things in the senior center. I mean, it's not just when I talk about annual fund. Sometimes I really believe it's worth spending the money to have somebody come in, get the job done, and then that's it. 
that's, you have to make the decision. Can you take your own pictures? Can you do the writing? Can you do, you know, your brochure can you put together? I mean, there's wonderful things you can do with, um, you know, Publisher or any of the other programs. There's, you can do some really nice things without having to spend a lot of money. Same thing with printing. Can you do it in-house? Um, I mean, you know, printers, they'll, they'll print, they'll fold, you know, they'll even send it out. They'll even do the mail merge for you. Uh, so you have to look at what, what you can do cost-effectively. The other thing is the timing of the campaign. If the timing of the campaign is a peak time for you, you've got to, don't do it to yourself. You've got to, do, you want to do it really well. So look at either changing the timing or make, maybe it's the time, maybe you should outsource some of the work. Don't forget to go um, techie. Um, does everybody know what this is? The yeah, the we are the weakest on this in that um, I would say that while we can bring a good campaign together, we can do things, we are definitely the weakest on our technology and on our social, social media. And um, we had an event where we did, um, like we gave away, it was raffle Colts tickets and some other uh, Notre Dame tickets, and you could tell those would be big draws. And they were, we had like 300 hits on our Facebook page and we were not ready for it. The only thing we had was something, some old thing on there. Had done. And we just sent out a campaign letter and we had 190 some hits. And I know it was from that mailing because it was that week. We were not ready. And so that's my weak spot. And as, as a team, that's our weakness. You got to get it together in all areas. So you asked for the big gifts early. How many, how many do this? How many actually sit down with people and say, would you consider, you know, I know you've been a supporter, and would you consider a gift of $10,000 this year to our annual fund? How many of you have those conversations? Okay, I gotta tell you, I'm not a fundraiser, but I believe in what I do, and I know you do too. That discovery study will help you learn who are the people you should talk to. People tell me this, and I believe it, that the mistake we make is not asking for enough. There's not anything in your community that is a better cause than what you're doing. But people don't always know how to support you. You need to give them that opportunity. You're not selling. You're not a fundraiser. You're developing that relationship where if they don't know what you need, they're not, they don't know how to help you. So it's, it's okay to take somebody to lunch. It's okay to do that kind of thing. Now, any expense that you incur as a result of asking someone for a gift gets tracked as a development expense. It has to be reported to your auditor. That, and it then gets taken off, you know, it's when they figure it, like your percentage of how much you spend on fundraising. But it is okay to take someone to lunch. It is. It's okay to do that. It's okay to meet somebody for coffee and pay for their coffee. It is a legitimate expense. It, and you're probably not making millions, so it's okay to expense that. It really is. So whoever said that you give a large amount, you can talk to them about that. Get the big gifts early. Don't wait until your campaign's in, in, in going because chances are the big gifts are not going to be the spur of the moment. The big gifts will be things that they've had some thought and in, put into when they're looking at where their charitable deductions would be. Um, the exception for this, we will never know the source of it, but one of our best donors uh, we think came about as one of our signs, as a result of one of our signs. Uh, the first year we did it, we got a $5,000 check. We have yet to ever meet these people. I've talked to them on the phone, and I've thanked them. And we're a small rural area. You'd think I would have, we'd come across. I have never come across these people. <laughs> and then this year they sent us another check. They were the first check we got in the mail after their letter. Amazing. So you never know. Now, like this one, that came early. But in the past, it came like at the very last minute. Somehow, something about the, came, the campaign caught them. But you always want to make sure that in the future, they're one of the first ones you go to. And this talks about having a party for big givers. That kind of that 
kind of thing makes me um, a little uncomfortable, except that I would say that big giver is in the eye of the, the beholder. So what might be a $25 gift to somebody might really be a million dollars, you know, in comparison. So you make sure you keep your, you're not excluding somebody when you're having something that acknowledges donors. So cast a wide net. Invite people who have given in the past to a reception or a home party. If you have those, those are in the stack, right? The, we had a, we had a, um, a reception, uh, we did pie and pleasantries. And then we did that a couple years at uh, one donor's house. And we had, and actually it was a supporter, we had another one that was called Three Dames. Three Dames and something. And it was really three wild and crazy women who anybody would love to come and spend an hour with them. And they sponsored it at their church fellowship hall. It was a lot of fun and they actually called it Three Dames and something. It's in your, and it, it worked. Um, host community, wine, small gatherings for donors, board members, community leaders. Ask people who are your friends if they would invite five or six people to come into your, their house. Um, but it's the same if you ever did a, did a Tupperware party or Avon or longer burger baskets, whatever. You know, you invite a whole lot more than what you want. And nobody really ever has a packed place. I mean, that's a great problem to have. Trevor, yes? What funds are you using to pay for those things? Okay, so if you are a public, like a, a um, you know, if you're a municipality, you're probably going to have to have like a Friends of the Senior Center group with that. Um, for me, we're a nonprofit, so we, that's just part of our annual budget. Um, it is very difficult to start to budget for that. It's one, you know, because you're the person who's trying to budget for Tai Chi or you know, benefit enrollment, and so you see all those things. So what you have to remember is no margin, no mission. If you're not raising the money for that, those things aren't going to be possible. So it's okay to spend some money on those things. And, and if you have to get a friend to stake you, you know, put up $500 or $1,000 to get you going, you know, there are people that will do that. Um, we had board members. Uh, that had posted at their house, and also, um, you know, donors themselves that really believed in the mission. They had receptions at their house and incurred the expense, so that's part of it. We, well, that's true. Yeah, member of the receptions were uh, done by. Okay, so people. our invitations we did on our photocopier. I designed them. Um, we sent them out, so minimal expense there. The receptions, the hostesses did all the food. Um, anything that was served, they covered. So getting started in those terms was very, relatively cheap. Um, when we had it at the senior center, um, instead of trying to host it yourself, get some, recruit some other people who are good hostesses at heart to do that and to provide whatever's going to be the refreshments. Um, but in terms of just your general money to, like, say, send out, you know, the, the pretty materials, if you need to get a sponsorship, you can, or get somebody to help you with that. Does that answer your question? Okay. So the thing to remember is that it is step by step. Um, you're hosting general receptions. Um, you know, it could be just a time to talk. Anyone who hasn't given, you're going to send the direct mail letters with the brochure to the entire list. You start out, you know, small, and you keep just getting bigger. After your campaign, you you know you've sent out the letters, and so you want to make sure that anyone who's answering your phones has some key information right there at the desk so that when, you know, who do I make this check out to? You need to have that information right there at the desk so they can get that. Um, you need to make sure that when, say, what is this, when someone says, what's that money going for? They, you don't want someone to say, I don't know. And make sure you thank them. Now, we've done um, probably our, I like, okay, I like fun things. I know it's a surprise. But I like fun things, and so one of my first things that we did was at, at the end of the year, and I got this off of publisher, you know, just the clip art, and it's a little boy writing a letter, right, to Santa Claus, he's got the Christmas cookies, and this little boy is asking, please help Santa make the wish come true, 
So what this little boy is asking is, Grandma says, living well in Wabash County needs gifts. I hope you will help her. I hope you help them. My grandparents hang out at the Winchester Senior Center. Grandma makes a, made a collage about her life and called it her life map. We look at it together and she tells me stories that are fun to hear about Grandpa. Oh, we, about Grandpa and Grandma. And Grandpa likes to go there sometimes for lunch. Grandma will stay for birthday parties. He says they do not worry about the candles on the cake, but they always have fun. So it goes on to talk about the different things, like Uncle Joe uses transportation. And our first time we sent this out, um, well, actually, the first time we did it, we did it for money for a bus. And we raised, um, it was more than $6,000 just sending out 60 of these cards. Um, we've been able to do, reach our goals with setting this is also, this is just as simple as Santa needs to make the most of his gift funds this year and says he has found an easy way to do it. And this says, in an economy when Santa needs to choose his charitable gifts wisely, Santa is buying NAP tax credits, it's a thing in, Ohio, it's a thing in Indiana, from Living Well in Wabash County. You can too. Your tax deductible gift will make a difference. And then it's signed from Santa's helpers at Winchester Senior Center. This is nothing more than cardstock that you get and that you do your thing and you make sure if you have to put United Fund or United Way there. You know, you have all the, all the elements, but we use this after we've had our, you know, we had the first letter we sent out about for raising money and then we sent out a second letter, right? For the reminders, we like to do something like this. So last year what we did, it was, and we hit our goal of 200,000 for the annual uh, fund. So I, um, we designed a campaign and I got a friend of mine and I have, Actually, we can pass these around. Yeah, sure. Um, so, I don't remember where the idea came from, but I went to a friend of mine who was a floral designer and said, can you make a, a floral arrangement out of matches and make it look Christmassy? And she said, okay. <laughs> so we came up with Light Us Up With Your Matching Gift and had this beautiful floral arrangement. And they had, and I still have the, flowers that were made out of the matches. And then we did little what we call club cards. Like you might see sometimes like events, uh, and they would have club cards at different like restaurants and things. And so it has help us match, meet our match. We had yard signs all over town that said help us meet our match. And on this we also did it on both sides. And then we had, this is double the size of a normal yard sign. And then we also had a big, like ones this size and down the ground that also said the same thing and two key places. And then the best thing we did was that at the end of the campaign, this actually was in January, February, uh, we, where we had our big signs, we had, we put a, took the signs down and had them put a new thing on it and said, thank you for helping us meet our match. And I really think that is really important then the other thing that we did, because you just, you know, you just can't get enough good mileage out of things, right? So the other thing we did was within, at the very end of the year, so like for December, towards December 31st, we did a, just a clock on, the, on one side that says there's still time, and then we had our help us meet our match, and then we did it with, um, I actually had a graphic artist help me, but we did it with a post-it, like it looked like a note for me had been put on there. It says we are so close to meeting our goal, I hope you would take time out of this busy season to please send a gift. Wishing you happy holidays, Beverly Ferry. And we reached our goal. So it took every bit of that. And there were some people on my team that thought I was crazy. But it, it really did work. So we had Amy's do's and don'ts. We now have Beth's words of wisdom about procrastination. <laughs> Don't let it happen to you. It is so easy to not get started. That's why the calendar of both a campaign, a discovery, if you haven't done it, a discovery study, and then your campaign calendar. It's really important. And what's really important is to have someone else who will hold your feet to the fire to make sure it gets done. Now, here's the other thing. You don't have to do everything yourself. 
Now, I know that's contrary to what every single person thinks in this room, but you don't. There are people who are willing to help. You just have to, you know, kind of like you did a discovery study with, you know, seeing where they were and their interests. You can also kind of figure that out with kind of thinking about which one of your friends or family might help you. So now it's your turn. And we hope that um, you will take these ideas and I hope that you have used some of your post-it notes. Um, and we will have a chance for questions, but I hope you will use some of your post-it notes to perhaps either have written down who you might ask. So perhaps you would do this. Who's the first person that comes to mind that you need to have a one-on-one -on -one meeting with to talk about the senior son? Is it, who, who comes to your mind first? Write that name down. Write that name down. Make sure you got to post it right there so you're going to see it. Write that name down. Who is somebody that you know who is the Pied Piper of get-togethers that nobody turns down? If she has a party, you're going to come. Because you want to, because whatever they do, they're fun. That, write that person's name down, because that's who you want to have host a reception or a coffee, something, a get together of some kind. Who do you know who's really well respected when it comes to finances? Who do you know, like, you know, is it, is it your board chair? Do you have a, a board treasurer? Who do you know that when, when they speak about anything to do with, you know, they're kind of the seal of approval? You need to go talk to that person. You need to get them on board with what you're doing. And then, if they are on board with it, you need to ask them to host a gathering because you're going to get a whole different set of people. So it's your turn, and we hope that you can use what we've got. It's time to you know, get yourself thinking out of the box, and I did bring our box. We had, because we literally did our campaign out of the box. <laughs> And it was a combination of tools. So I do like to organize, although, if you, no, I do like to organize. But I, I, if things get out of control, everybody know how that, what that feeling is? Okay. So I love these little tools that you can, like for your campaign, you know, you can have a little section. Um, you know, with these, all you need, really, some hanging files. Um, I love, I absolutely love, you can tell because I have the post-its, I like little things like that. But these binders I buy, I just get them online um, from like any you know office supply store. They're kind of pricey, but they really are functional. And they'll hang right in here, and it's just, and then everything is it's just great. I'm not as big a fan about the other binders, but we can do it. Hey, go to any store that sells like the stationery, like Walmart or Kmart or whoever, Target. They'll have these blank inside cards. Just get these, not that much money. You can buy them this December and go the day after Christmas and get them for next year. And then put your message in. Very cheap. You don't need a graphic. I actually had a printer confront me and want to know where I'd gone to have these made. I said, well, Art, sorry. I have a senior citizen story. My grandmother used to go a day or two before Christmas get the cards she wanted okay. to pay half price for and hide them in the store. Oh, and then go the day, day after Christmas and get them half price. Okay. So I, I, I gotta tell you, it's not just your grandmother who does that. <laughs> it works. You know where I got started doing that was when you know our kids were really into like the Ninja Turtles and stuff, you know, many years ago. And so like if you found one, you weren't ready to buy it or whatever, but you put it back. Did you want your child to find it? Okay. Secrets of, you know. So this is really all we really needed. Uh, labels uh, are your best friends. And OK, so like I got, like this has envelopes and cards. And you, can, you know, a printer can get the envelopes for you. Labels are your best friend. You can make your own business cards with some of these. You can also get, uh, we did some lovely um, in, uh, name tags. And then also we did uh, packets. When we went to meet somebody who was what I would perceive as someone who's going to be a major gift, a bigger donor, we would put together, in fact, do you want to get, there's some of it over there, the blue ones. We put packets together that didn't cost us that much, so we did everything in-house, and we were able to leave them with this packet that had the letter, it had the case statement, it had the challenge, it had all of it in there, our brochure, a self-addressed stamped envelope for their gift, 
and we left it with them and it just, you know, it, they're not very expensive and, and it just works. And it makes it look like, wow, they really know what they're doing. So we have some words of wisdom as we end. Oops. First of all, it takes a good idea. So if you're not the idea person, find the person who is. And I mean, I spend all year thinking of what, you know, thing I'm going to do next. So as you share your story, and it doesn't have, I mean, I could come up with, anybody have an idea if you see these three tulips? What do you think of it? Do you have an idea? Okay, I would put that on a card and I would say, make your imprint. Matt, make a lasting impression. Um, we need all hands on deck. Um, we're really blooming at the senior center. <laughs> I mean, you, so any idea is not always a good idea. You've got to run past other people. <laughs> and I will tell you, this is this was actually a very serious one. We were going to go. We did, went with a black and white theme this year, and I had just, I had planned on it like a year ago, and it was going to be it's um, it's black and white, meaning it's basic. But with all the things that have happened to us culturally in the last six months, nine months, a year, there was no way I could run that campaign. I, there's no way I could put that up on a billboard. It just was not culturally sensitive. You know, sometimes you just have to pull back and rethink. So I have had to figure this out. So what I did was, in my letter, in our stationery, I don't think I have it up here is we did it in black and white, very stark black. And so the first line of it, trying to figure out how to salvage this, first line of it was, sometimes life is not black and white. Sometimes it's not that simple. And then went into it, and then used life and living as the keywords. Our, um, our slogan, we have, a, we have a little jingle to go around our, our radio ads, and it's living well. Life is so much better when you're living well. And our agency name is Living One. So then we tied that in in the letter. So if you had, so we tried to establish black and white. We went, this is what we're going with. Our billboards are going to have these pictures. We're doing a reception called, there's a gallery called Gallery 64. And so we're doing a reception at Gallery 64, and it's going to be Living Well at 64. We're going to play Paul McCartney music in the background. <laughs> and we're having it's an art gallery, and it's going to be the opening of this display. This gentleman was mayor of the day. And we have, uh, I believe, 36 of these. We are also going to put out a calendar, and that's what I'm going to take to people. It's going to be a brochure. I'm going to take a calendar, and each calendar is going to have two pictures and just a snippet of a story. We're going to do, we're also doing um, cards, you know, like, and we'll wrap them up and use them as gifts over the next year. We just wrap up the ribbon. Take an idea and go. So here's our parting words. Oh, you just gotta get started. And our trite words of wisdom because we couldn't resist. Keep calm and stay positive. Keep calm and stay organized. Let's go back to that one. <laughs> really, keep calm and stay organized. Keep calm and carry on. And if you can't do any of those things, find someone who's going to be your true so that you can. Does anyone have any questions? We're right on the button. Are those people, the actual people that can do Oh, these are, yes. We had a photographer come in and take pictures. And he did, he was in there for two days and doing it. Yes, those are our participants. Anybody feel left out? Um, we made sure that everybody was asked. <laughs> I mean, we really made sure. In fact, we talked some people into it. And, uh, because I didn't want to have that issue. So when we talked about putting pictures on billboards, we had to make sure that we had enough signs in town so we could get everybody up there. Your discovery process, is it just with the individuals? It's, it's also our focus groups. We do well, I, I met, I'm sorry, corporation. Individual, business, yeah. corporate, business. community leaders. We got anybody who was yes. in take that test or that questionnaire, we got them. Yep. Okay. All right, and do you do that every year? No. You just did that for creating your first? Yes, I suspect about four years we'll probably do it again. Okay. So on your annual campaign, you're sending out just one letter a year? No. Okay. We do um, three touches 
Three touches. There you go. <laughs> so we do our first letter, and then the second letter is about six weeks later, yeah. four weeks later, depending on how whether I procrastinated. And then so you have those two letters, and then I do my year round, which is like I do like a Christmas card, and then I'll do like a post like, or a postcard, and I'm only sending them to people that I have not um, heard from. Okay, that's another question. Yes. yes. How, you know, over the years, I've been sending out thousands of letters okay. at the end of each year, and I'm thinking to myself, at what point do you really say, this person has never made a contribution, I don't think they're going to make a contribution, because each letter costs dollars when yep. you're looking at the expense. Yep. Or do you- So like, why is the person on your list? Five, five years. Five well, five well, years. because, <laughs> We have, I take the list from our membership, and then for, on the development side, I take it from individuals who have made gifts. Right. So I don't want to leave the members out, because you don't, I mean, we have over 2,000 members, and I don't know them all. Well, my suggestion is that, one, you need to make sure you're asking them for the right things. Okay. Um, there are a couple different ways to ask, and you might have other needs. So those people have never given, but you know they're involved, you might want to do a discovery study with those people. Okay. Mm -hmm. And they might tell you, we're not interested when you call. I, I just figured they're not interested if you've been doing it for four years. And they you may not be asking for the right thing. That, yeah. um, you might need to think about something where it's like a, a planned gift. Mm -hmm. them. I mean, there might be other things. Maybe they could gift you in some other way. Years back, it used to be as a general rule of thumb that if you, look, if you have a goal, 10% of your donors are going to contribute 50% of your goal. The next 15% are going to contribute 25% of your goal, and it's going to take the 75% to get that uh, the little gifts to make the goal. Is that is that? Is it's flipped around. And now it's like, like, now it's like night, I mean, every time you go to a conference, it gets smaller. I mean, last, remember it was 80 20, like 10 years ago. Now it's 90 10. I went to AFP the other day and it was like 95.5. It was like pretty soon it's going to be 3% we're only talking to. And what that means is, you know, the 10th, if you have a list of 1,000 people, you know, you, the 10% of that list is what's going to secure your goal, right? Yeah. So, but, but it's still very important to, to yeah. still be reaching out to everyone kind of because important. we got to get that little blue. From kind of important from a planning standpoint to realize that you're not going to get much out of but that's where your discovery study can help you. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I have, we really thank you for your attention. Thank you for putting up with our little show.